Here we go. Hey guys, welcome to our class for tonight. My name is Mr. E. I am a professional call center coach, and my job is to impart to you my call center knowledge and experience that I've gathered for over 15 years. The aim of this class for today is in this session, we're going to do a quick active listening class. We have been discussing billing as part of our uh, topics of discussion lately here for our customer service class. And in this uh, act listening activity, we'll have the opportunity to listen to a Southern accent from the South. So we will be listening to an accent from the South <clears throat> and we'll be listening to a billing concern. So this active listening activity is in terms of a billing number one opening. Thank you for calling Amazon customer service. This is Carlos, how may I help you today? To empathy. Hi, Mr. Customer. I can relate to what you're saying about your package, and I'm very sorry to hear you haven't received it yet. Assurance. Please understand that you're my priority at this moment, and you're talking to a tracking expert here at Amazon. I can definitely verify on my end the status of your verification. Can I please have your order number, please? Thank you. Would you please go next step? Okay. Hold procedure. Mr. Customer, I need to work on my system for a couple of moments. Can I place you on hold for two minutes while I work on the system? Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, Mr. Customer, as my system information shows, the package was delivered on 12 first. Okay, Mr. Customer, just to be on the same page, um, you will receive your package tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. through UPS. Once again, my name is Rocky Balboa. Thank you very much uh, for choosing Amazon. Have a wonderful day, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Blessings to everybody at the family. See ya, bye-bye. Concern, a billing discrepancy. So the customer will call in to explain his reason for calling. But before that, um, we are going to listen to transactional information, right? There are two kinds of information that you should know about. I like to call it the art of active listening. The art of active listening for a call center is the ability to listen intently to the customer's keywords to determine the root cause of the problem. I'll say that for you again. The art of active listening is to listen to the customer intently and listen to the keywords so you can create a mental picture of the customer's reason for calling. That's active listening. And that's what we're going to prepare you in today. So get ready. There are two types of information that you have to listen to when you are doing active listening. Did you know that? There is the top of the layer information, which is called, I call it the transactional information. It's just information that you need to verify the account, to verify an identity, to open up a file, to uh, follow up on a case. It's just transactional. This information can include names, account numbers, addresses, social securities, emails. It's just transactional. And a lot of times when we're starting at a call center and listening is not our thing because English is not our first language, a lot of us freak out and we feel nervous about listening to numbers and addresses and mistakes when you, in fact, you shouldn't because transactional information is manageable. That means that you can handle it. You can request politely for the information to be repeated. You can verify and double check the information the customer is giving you. Now, of course, you got to train your ears a little bit to listen to English because if you don't listen to English, if you don't have the habit of listening to English, it's going to be a little bit difficult to distinguish numbers and different names and whatnot. So creating a habit for listening is the first step. But anyway, back to the types of information. We're going to talk about transactional information. For this particular customer, you will have the opportunity to listen to the customer's name, the account number, the customer's address, and the customer's social security uh, information. After that, we'll go ahead and Listen for the reason of the call. Reason of the call. And we'll finish this activity with a little bit of my vocabulary uh, transcription. So I'm going to uh, describe to you and explain to you the colloquialisms, the uh, vernacular English that the customer is using in the call. So let's get started. So we're going to start with a little phrase here for, for you today, a little bit of vernacular English, vernacular, as you guys might remember from my classes. 
Vernacular is a type of English that the ordinary common man on the street can understand and speaks. So your customers will call you and they will use a lot of vernacular English that perhaps you're not aware of. So listening to uh, conversation to real conversation that will allow you to build vocabulary. A phrase that I like to share with you and that you're also going to listen to in the audio is the phrase, I need your help straightening out the bill or I need your help straightening this out. To straighten something out, to straighten out means to correct something. So if a customer says to you, I need to straighten out this bill, this means I need you to find a problem or I need you to make me understand it. I need you to straighten out these over these extra charges. I need you to straighten out the charges on the bill, on the, on the account. That means I need you to correct it. I need you to fix it. So to straighten out, it, it, straighten is an adjective. So it's, it's straight. If something is straight, it means that it's, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's headed in the right direction. You know, it's straight. It's not crooked. It's straight. So usually when we face an inconvenience or a problem, something is crooked, something is not going in the right direction. So I need you to straighten it out. That's where it comes from. In order to pronounce it, uh, I've got it here phonetically so you can actually use it. Here, we're going to pronounce it like this. Straighten it, straighten it out. So you're going to pronounce the A and the I with a diphthong. A, A, straighten. And then you're going to use the N nasal sound. N. So you're going to say straighten it, straighten it, straighten it out. Now, when you connect the preposition to the last consonant, you're going to connect it with a flap T. And you're going to say, it out, straighten it out, straighten it out, straighten it out. Okay, let's practice. Straighten it out, slowly. Straighten it out. Straighten it out. And now, connecting it with a flap T, the flap T is always, ra, ra. straighten it out. Straighten it out. I need to straighten it out. Where I need you to straighten it, straighten this out. Okay? So that's the colloquialism for today. Write it down. Now, let me give you some tips. For the name, I want you to capture the customer's name. If there's a middle initial, it's usually usually a letter and the customer's last name. For the account number, it could be a series of numbers undefined. Right? You guys will figure that out. For the address, I need the house number. I need the street name, the type of street. I also need the city and the state abbreviation and the zip code. So if you've never done this before, don't worry. We're going to help you. So here, I want the house number, right? I want the street name, the name of the street, like Main Street. The type of street, right? Is it a, is it a, is it a, 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 what is it? A cove? Is it a circle? Is it a boulevard? Is it a, an avenue? What is it? And I also need here the, the city. After that, you're going to listen to the city and here the state abbreviation. So where is it? Is it in Houston, Texas? And finally the zip code, which is a five, which is a five digit, uh, it's a five digit uh, number. So I want that captured. For the social security, uh, the customer is only, only going to provide you the last four, one, two, three, four, because for security measures, sometimes uh, customers don't like to provide you the full social security. It's very delicate. So just with the last four isn't. So let's go to some transactional information to get started this evening. Let's begin. Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing active listening. We're listening to Leo Rogers. And we're listening to his transactional information, information like name, account number, address, and social security. Let's give it a listen. Uh, so we're all on the same page here. Let's see. So here we go. Let's listen to Mr. Leo Rogers, a very cool customer. Howdy, this is Leo Rogers. I've got, I've got howdy, howdy, this is Leo Rogers. Rogers. I've, I've got, got myself, myself in a bit of a pickle, pickle with my card, and, and I, I reckon I need your help straightening it out. There's, There's a charge on there that, that I can swear on a stack of Bibles ain't mine. Now, I don't cotton to no funny business with my hard-earned money. 
And I sure as shooting didn't authorize this transaction. Anyhow, that's Rogers. That's R-O-D-G-E-R-S. The account number is 4896-2275-3103-7812. The address tied to my account is 1258 Hickory Lane, Columbia, South Carolina, 29209. That's Hickory. Like, like the tree, tree H I C K O R Y. And, and Columbia is C O L U M B I A. And the last four of my social security is 4562. Now I need this sorted out pronto. Much obliged for your help in advance. All right, let's help out this uh, great customer by capturing his information. Now, first of all, uh, the customer's name is Leo Rogers. That's Lima Echo Oscar for Leo, and Rogers is. Romeo Oscar Delta Golf Echo Romeo Sierra. So you can just verify that information with the customer. Uh, excuse me, sir. I didn't catch the last name. Could you kindly repeat that for me? Or I'm sorry, sir. Uh, just to double check here. Can you key spell your last name, sir? I just want to make sure that I got it right. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that, sir. Now moving on to the account number, which is a very long number, but no problem. If you didn't catch the numbers, just double check. Okay, Mr. Customer, just to double check here, uh, the account number is 4896-2275-3103-7821. Am I correct? If, if you have a mistake, the customer will let you know. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. And okay, my apologies, sir. Can I please get that again? Or would you mind repeating that for me again, sir? Just be polite and request the information. Double check the numbers. Now let's go to the address. <clears throat> Don't worry, it's quite simple. The customer mentioned a number. The first number that you hear is always going to be the house number or the building number. If you didn't catch it, just ask the customer politely to repeat it for you. Mr. Customer, my apologies. I did not catch the house number. Could you repeat that again for me, sir? 1258. Thank you, sir. Just to double check. It's 1258. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you, sir. Now, for the next piece of information, it's going to be the name of the street, which is, in this case, Hickory. And the street type is a lane, a lane, which in Spanish, if you speak Spanish, is a carril. So that's a lane. So the name of the carril or the lane is called hickory. Somebody decided in the municipality to call it hickory, like the tree, because there's a tree called a hickory tree for some reason. After that, we have the city. It's the city of Colombia. And the customer actually was nice enough to spell it out for you. Yes, there are nice customers, not your stereotypical uh, angry customers. So he spelled it out, which is uh, Charlie, Oscar, Lima, Uniform, Mike, Bravo, India, Alpha. And as it, that, uh, Columbia is uh, located in the state of South Carolina. So at, uh, next, uh, next to the city, you'll find the state and every state as you might already know, is abbreviated. So for South Carolina, it's very easy. We take the S for South and the C for Carolina. Next, we find the zip code. The zip code is the Zone Improvement Plan Code. And this is generally going to be five digits. So here we just have this for zip code 29209. Actually, I kind of found that the zip code was the trickiest part for me to capture for this exercise. As uh, the reason because... Uh, the reason was because the customer had an accent, a southern accent from the south. So the customer had a southern accent, and there's a kind of like a draw there, cowboy. So my number is 29209. So he kind of like said it like with that southern drawl, that twang to it. So it's kind of tricky. I didn't, I had to actually listen to it like three times to, de to get it. But in real life, I would just have to ask the customer, Mr. Customer, my apologies, apologies. I did not capture that that last uh, that zip code. C could I have it again, please, sir? I would really appreciate that. No problem, sir. I'll repeat it for you. That's two nine two zero nine. Do you do you have it right, partner? Oh yes, I have it right now, sir. Don't worry. Thank you so much. Move on to the next part of information, the social security. This was easy. Customer said my the last four of my social, the last four of my social. Right, so he said, the last four of my social. So the social number, he didn't give you the full number, which is, let's say, four here, two, six, 
eight, nine. It's nine numbers, if I'm not mistaken. Nine? Yes. Might be wrong. Geesh, too many numbers. So the numbers were four, five, six, two. If you didn't catch it, just talk politely to the customer and request it again and double check it. Okay? And that, boys and girls, is transactional information. Nothing to get worried about, nothing to lose your your your, your sleepover. Just it just manage it by requesting the information to the customer politely. And of course, you know, practice some listening at home. So that's pretty much it. Next, let's go to the reason of the call. As I said at the beginning of the class, active listening or the art of active listening is to listen intently. Intently, the adverb intently means with your full attention. That's intently. So with our full attention, we're going to listen to the customer's transactional information and keywords to determine the reason for the call. Now, um, based on what the customer explained to us, there is a charge on the bill. So the customer, right? Customer is disputing. We can use the verb dispute. You already know how to use it. Arguing, right? Or wanting to uh, to present a case is disputing, uh, is disputing his bill charges right uh we just add something extra which he doesn't agree that's it that's the reason of the call then the rest of the everything else that he said were just colloquialisms vocabulary phrases and expressions that they use in the south and just venting out his his uh, concern which i'm going to try to explain to you in the next five minutes number one opening Thank you for calling Amazon Customer Service. This is Carlos. How may I help you today? Two. Empathy. Hi, Mr. Customer. I can relate to what you're saying about your package, and I'm very sorry to hear you haven't received it yet. Assurance. Please understand that you're my priority at this moment, and you're talking to a tracking expert here at Amazon. I can definitely verify on my end the status of your verification. Can I please have your order number, please? Thank you. Would you please go next step? Okay. Hold procedure, Mr. Customer. I need to work on my system for a couple of moments. Can I place you on hold for two minutes while I work on the system? Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, Mr. Customer. As my system information shows, the package was delivered on 12 first. Okay, Mr. Customer. Just to be on the same page, um, you will receive your package tomorrow at 7:30 a.m. through UPS. Once again, my name is Rocky Balboa. Thank you very much uh, for choosing Amazon. Have a wonderful day. A Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, blessing to everybody at the family. See ya. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. We're back here at the Active Listening. Our next uh, listening activity is to listen to complete for the vocabulary. So we also increase our vocabulary level, uh, learning some colloquialisms and expressions from the south of the United States. Let's listen to our dear customer one more time. Howdy. Howdy. This, this is Leo Rogers. Rogers. I've, I've got, got myself, myself in a bit of a pickle with my card. card. Customer begins by saying howdy, which is the southern way of saying hello. So howdy is a way of saying hello in the south of the United States. I got myself in a pickle. If you find yourself in a pickle, it's an old-fashioned way of saying I found I find myself in a problem, a situation. <clears throat> a problem or a situation here. Oh, I just gotta check my spelling here. So the customer feels that he's He's got you get yourself in a pickle. Yeah, I, reckon I reckon I need your help. Yeah, I reckon I need your help. Card. And I, I've, I've got, got myself, myself in a bit of a pickle, pickle with my card. card. In a bit of a pickle with my card. In a bit of a pickle with my card. So what, what he's saying here, if you are in a pickle, like I said, you are in some kind of confusion, some kind of difficulty or problem. I've got myself in a pickle or... We, I got myself into this pickle. I got myself into this problem. So pickle is a problem. A pickle is a cucumber. It's it's a vegetable, but somehow it's used as in this type of expression. So what he's saying here, I got myself a, a problem with my card. That's what he's saying. Um, let's listen. Let's continue. Yeah, I reckon I need your help straightening it out. The customer says here, I reckon I need your help. The expression reckon is an old fashioned term for saying, I believe or I think. So he's saying here, I think I need your help, or I believe I need your help, straightening, straightening uh, this out. So I need your help. He says here, straightening 
this out. So here we have the verb straighten, straightening this out. Let's listen again to the customer. Yeah, I reckon I need, I need your help straightening it out. out. Ah, straighten it out. So he used here a pronoun, straighten it out, which means, as I explained at the beginning of the class, to straighten something out means to correct it, to put it back on course, put it back on track, put it in the right direction. There's a charge on there that I can swear on a stack of Bibles ain't mine. There's a charge there that I can swear, S-W-E-A-R. To swear is to make an oath, right? To make a, a, a when you promise, it's a promise uh, that you will do something. So if you swear it, on a stack of Bibles, for incidentally, I have a Bible here. So when you go, this expression comes from you when you go to trial in the United States. Uh, when you testify in the United States, you have to put your hand on top of the Bible, and you need to swear. You, you need to make a. You, you need to swear. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember how it goes, but um, the the attorney or somebody there, the, the prosecutor says, "Do you swear that everything you will say is absolutely truth and nothing but the truth?" So help me God, I swear. So you swear. You're 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 putting your you, what you're saying is that you are promising that everything that you will say is true by the word on the Bible. <laughs> so it's something that's done there. So he's using it as a form of sarcasm. Now, I don't, I don't cotton to no, no funny business with my hard-earned money. And I sure as shooting didn't authorize this transaction. Now, I don't cotton to to funny business. Uh, the, the expression funny business refers to business that is a bad business. So if, if something is funny, it's like strange odd, not, not correct. And with my hard earned money, that means the money that I worked so hard to obtain. And I sure shouldn't, and I sure as shooting didn't authorize this transaction. So I, I'm sure I, 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 I didn't, uh, by no way, uh, authorize this transaction. Anyhow, that's, that's Rogers. Rogers. Then he uses here the anyhow to change topic. You use anyhow or anyway, to change topic. So after he vented, he explained to us his problem. Now he's going to change a topic by talking about transactional information. That's R O D G E R S. The account number is 4896-2275-3103-7812. The address tied to my account is 1258 Hickory Lane, Columbia, South Carolina, 29209. The customer says here the address tied to the account. Tied to my account is, here we're using the verb tied, which is this, similar to saying attached or associated to my account. So it, it's another way of saying the same thing, of, of being attached or associated. That's, That's hickory. hickory. Like, like the tree, H-I-C-K-O-R-Y. And, and Columbia is C-O-L-U-M-B-I-A. And the last four of my social security is 4562. And the last four, usually customers use that expression. And the last four, the last, the last four of my social. So usually the, the social security number finishes in four digits, and that's what customers will likely reveal because they don't want to disclose their full social security. It's very sensitive information. Now, now I, I need this sorted out pronto. Much, much obliged for your, your help in advance. advance. Now I need this sorted out pronto. Need this sorted out. So again, the the phrasal verb to sort out means to correct. I need this solved uh, pronto. Here he's using Spanish is a form of sarcasm, uh, which means uh, fast. Uh, it's the same thing. Much obliged, uh, obliged for your help in advance. The obliged verb is an old-fashioned form of saying thank you very much, but it's old-fashioned. Okay, guys. So there you have the colloquialisms the expressions and idioms used by this American customer from the South so you can further advance your vocabulary when taking calls and dealing with Americans. So thank you, team. We're going to go ahead and take a break and be back with more on this fantastic evening for tonight.